Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. So in a previous video, we talked about routing drums, like in Cubase and balancing them. And now we get to the good stuff. We're gonna mix some metal drums. So uh, let's dig right in. All right, so here we are again in a beautiful program called Cubase. Maybe you've heard of it. Um, so we're gonna take off where we left in the last video. Um, let's just take a listen to the balance of the drums together with the bass and the guitars. And then we'll, uh, we'll dig into the, the drum mixing. So here we go. Okay, so that sounds uh, pretty decent. So um, before I started mixing, uh, before I hit record on a camera, um, I listened to some of my favorite mixes to calibrate my ears, which is something I always do before uh, I go mixing. And the best thing to do as well is to start mixing early in the morning, like when your ears are really fresh. So I listened to some of my favorite mixes, um, um, there's an album called Resurrection from a band called Chimera, which is mixed by Andy Sneap. I listened to the song Needle because that song to me is like one of my favorite mixes of all time. It's perfectly balanced. This all comes to taste, but that's, um, that's the kind of mixes I like. Also, um, All Hope Is Gone from Slipknot is a record I really like. And one of my favorite mixes of all time is uh, from the album Shogun uh, from Trivium. Uh, mixed by Colin Richardson. That album to me is the holy grail of, uh, of mixes. Anyway, so when I start mixing drums, uh, I always, just my way of working, start with the cymbals because when I start filtering on the cymbals, I instantly get clarity. Also a disclaimer, uh, I'm gonna do a lot of soloing. So just soloing the sort I'm working on, um, which is not something I do uh, very often while mixing, but I'm gonna solo a lot so I can, for demonstration purposes, um, show you guys what I'm working on, what I'm hearing and stuff. So, like I said, let's, um, let's start with the symbols and I wanna get the loop section, should be good. I'm gonna mute the guitars and uh, bass. Okay, so I'm gonna filter off till, well, let's see. Uh, around 500 Hertz. Like when I'm mixing um, like a band that's like very fast, very aggressive, like brutal death metal, like going 280 BPM, I could filter off to 800 hertz or even one kilohertz because most of the time there could be kick drum in there or a lot of snare bleed and if I want to have like a clear punchy mix that's not gonna help but for this tempo around 400 hertz that's what I like yeah it cleans out the kick like it removes the kick a bit a bit of the body of the snare but I have enough body in the close mics so this is how I like it so the symbols are pretty bright, so I'm gonna like mellow them down if it makes any sense. And I hear a whistly kind of tone. That there. Hopefully you can hear the difference with like good speakers or on good headphones. So, and when I press here, it's gonna be a bypass. So let's take a comparison. Take a listen. Okay, so 
that's pretty cool. And now I'm gonna use a compressor to even out the hits. And what I like to do is do a very quick attack, very quick release, and then about, <laughs> I don't wanna name numbers, but I aim for like three or four dB. So hopefully you can hear that like, instead of like the symbols is like one hit, like a peak dynamically and down, now it's more like, like the compressor is pushing that down so that wash is like more continuous, if that makes any sense. Yep, sounds good. So now let's go to the rooms. This is really, depends on taste. Like, um, again, with fast metal bands, like brutal death metal, grind quarry, like really fast stuff. With room tracks, I could like filter everything up to 500 hertz or maybe even 800, depends. But with this kind of tempo, um, I really like the kick drum in a room mics. And uh, the, the kick drum in a room mics could help the the close mic of the kick like give it a bit more body around like 50 hertz so hearing it with this kind of tempo i think i'm not going to filter everything off perhaps about maybe 100 hertz maybe lower like think about the kick drum and just do uh, a mid dip but here we go So I really like that kick thump around. Good headphones or good speakers, then you can hear it. Like when I'm gonna unsolo it and compare it with a kick. I like that a lot. And I'm gonna reduce a tiny bit of that harshness. Yeah, I like it way more. And with room tracks, most of the time I do a lot more compression. So, quick attack, quick release. Like the cool thing with the cool thing with a compressor on room on room mics, uh, to my ears, it makes the room sound bigger because of the compression. Uh, the tail is more audible, more compressed, so it makes it appear as more bigger. Okay, let's hear it with the drums. like that. So now I'm going to the kick drum. Uh, first thing I always do is filter off the unwanted frequencies I don't need with the kick drum. Around 50 hertz. Then I cut like around between 100 and 200, some sort of boxy area. And by cutting this area, like it depends fully on the, on the kick sample or kick, like maybe it could be 200 hertz, you get the desired effect, and maybe even below 100, it depends really on the source. But for this kick sample, it works around this frequency area. And then I like to boost around 50, 60 hertz. Okay, 
that sounds good for now. And so now I'm gonna add some, uh, some highs on the kick, so a more clicky, clicky sound. So let's check it with the wrist. And I boosted a lot of higher frequencies, which makes the signal louder. So that's why I'm turning the volume fader a bit down. Okay, sounds good to me. Let's check the snare. So here's some nasty ringy thing I don't want. And be careful with this, and it also depends. Like if I would like cut out the ring on a grindcore record, people would sue me probably. That kind of thing. And now I'm gonna probably boost a lot for some brightness. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's check it. Now, it depends on the project. Um, sometimes I put a compressor on a channel, but nine out of 10 times, uh, I just let pedal compression do the work, which I'll turn on later. And I probably would have to turn down the volumes of uh, some of the, the shells. But let's go to the snare sample now. Filter off stuff I don't need. It's already processed pretty much, but I still hear some mids that I don't like. And I could use some body. So over here, see this peak? That's the body of the snare, so I like to boost that. Or a bit below it. Check it together with this snare because this snare also has a bit of body, so they complement each other, but it could also be a bit too much. Here we go. So I do notice I probably cut a bit of too much mids on the rooms. Let's check it now. Okay, and now I'm gonna add some of the room sample. I'm not using the snare bottom on this one because normally I don't like the snare bottom. I like it a lot. <laughs> Filter our stuff I don't need. I hear like um, a frequency like popping out. Okay, so let's check that. Perhaps a bit of too much body, lower it a bit. Like I said in my previous video, I always have my first mixes, my kicks and snares are probably too loud. Cool. 
cool. So I'm gonna quickly check it with the bass and the guitar just to see where it sits. So I hear the cymbals are a bit too bright, so I'm gonna get back to that in a bit. But now let's go focus on the hi-hat first, which normally I do right after the cymbals, but always seem to forget for some reason. So I'm gonna loop this section. Like I don't like it harsh, and I hear like a whistle. So that's a bit more controlled. Okay, so the hi-hat on the cymbal mics are kind of annoying me. So I'm gonna use a de to kind of duck like when the hi-hat pops up because the hi-hat, because it's like metal clashing on each other um, the highest frequencies on those mics. So that sounds better to my ears. Okay, so now I'm gonna focus on the toms. Now I think I'll do, oh, let's be honest, 100% of the time almost, I think is a cut mids on the toms. So let's do this one. So I almost never cut this part because that's like the tone of the tom, so I really want to have that pop out. All right, and now we'll do the second floor tom. I'm just doing it in this order because those are the toms being hit at the intro. Like you hear this frequency, that really wooliness, that's not pleasant for a metal record. Okay, so let's take a listen. So I really like how those toms are blending with the room. So my opinion gives a bit more of a natural feel. Okay, so now rectum one. Basically, with all the toms, I'm doing the same thing, but it shifts because the note like gets lower uh, on each tom. So I filter off be like before the, the fundamental, you could say, and then I cut a bit of mids well, like 60 B, a bit of mids uh, right after it. Uh, boost a bit for the clarity. And now we need floor tom one as last. Like, it gets more clarity, like really modern and thick. That's how I like it. Okay, let's start from the beginning. That's 
sounds pretty good. Uh, I forgot to turn up the chinas and the splashes. I'm not using any splashes, but turn up the chinas, see how that sits. Cool. And now we get to my favorite part, which is parallel compression. So I have a compressor here, the vintage compressor from Cubase. Um, these settings sound phenomenal in my opinion. So what it does, um, parallel compression, like you have all these channels, they go to the instrumental, then go to, to the stereo out. And parallel to that, if it makes any sense, I have a compressor, which is going to the drums group, if I'm correct. Yes, to the drums group. So it's compressing pretty heavy, like around minus 20 dB. So then I can blend that in. So we'll take, um, I like this fill and then with a bit of a beat. So let's do it around here. So what I'll do is I'll slowly up the fade of the parallel compression. And because it's so aggressively, aggressively compressing, it's probably gonna make the shells louder because this parallel compressor is only on a kick snare, snare sample, bottom snare that's being used, and the toms. And that's a bit less on the kick, if I'm correct, yeah, than the rest. And before I forget, I'll do the same on the full second floor tom because they're really bass heavy and they can like really push the compressor too much. But let's take a listen. I, I love this part because it makes it more sound like a record. I'm gonna lower the output of the parallel compressor a bit. And I'll turn down the sample track a tiny bit. So I'll solo the drums, or just mute this, and I'll do the same thing again so you can hear the difference. So I'll just play the beat and then just slow down the fade in. So that sounds pretty good. Let me just listen one more time with the band. So sounds pretty good. And there I say it, I think I could use a bit more compression just on the drums group. So I'm just gonna grab the regular compressor, um, do the attack around 30, let's see how that sounds, and a pretty quick release. So let me just solo the drums. Like for a lot of people that would be way too much compression, but <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I like that the really rock, radio rock compressed sound. So what I'm doing now is I'm a being like back and forth and I touch the makeup gain so my ears won't get fooled that like it's louder so it's better. To be honest I like it around ratio 2 like we had it.
So if I compress too much, I can hear like when the kick drum is like, like, like beating the compressor, the cymbals get faded away too much because of the ducking. But I like the, the pushing effect. For this though, I, I think I would not do this like on a death metal record. But for this kind of like modern, like Swedish metal kind of vibe, it works. Maybe a bit too much. Okay, so let's check it in the mix. I love it. I, I really love it how it's like almost too much compressed, but to my ears it, uh, it sounds like radio rock fat. I can really like that, that pushing effect. Like I was listening to the Nothing From Corn. It's also like really open, but also compressed. It, it reminds me, like when using this compressor, it gives me that, uh, that impression. One thing I'll do automation wise, like I have this double kick part around here. It's automated so the volume goes down. So cool tool is that using this one. The range selector is called, and I'm just going right before the kick, all the way to the last kick and just turn it down maybe two decibels. Let's see how it feels. That's a bit too much, so maybe one decibel. So one last listen from the top. Okay, so one thing before I forget, what I always do is I route the hi-hat to the reverb, I route the ride to the reverb, and uh, the toms. So let's see how that sounds. So that sounds pretty cool. Depends on the song. Sometimes I like a lot of reverb, sometimes a bit less. Also depends on the part of the song. Okay, the snare is real, <laughs> really loud now. And usually I will take breaks after like every 50 minutes or so to like recalibrate my ears. Cool. I really like how that sounds. It's a uh, nice, modern and thick. And I'm actually very surprised how much I like this compressor now. Just the basic compressor of Cubase um, on the drum group, the drums group. Like, okay, so let's A beat it one more just for fun. All right, 
so uh, that's it. That's um, that's some uh, drums, uh, some metal drums mixing. So I really hope you guys like this video. Um, please, please let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. I'll, I I love to help you guys out if you have any questions. So uh, that's no problem. So uh, that's it for now. See you next time. Stay safe. Cheers. <laughs>